Welcome back to DXP Today as we uh, get ready for COP28 but also celebrate all things company innovation. And when talking company innovation, company creation, who better than our next guest for uh, well over the last 15 years. Uh, he and his team have been making dreams come true when it comes to companies. Well over 70,000 companies created in the last 15 years and still going strong. It's a pleasure to welcome to the uh, show chairman and co-founder of Virtue Zone, Neil Petch. Mr P, good to see you. Good evening, Tom. Gentlemen. So I suppose the best place to start is back then as well, because it's all good and well, us chatting, chatting over on the sofa here in 2023 about company setups and what a great idea it is, etc. because we've got that hunger, we've got that infrastructure, as Ravi was saying. 15, 16 years ago when you set up, this was something, what did you see in the water that you thought, this is the right time? Well, let's take it back 200 years. I think someone said everything that's there to be invented has been invented. And everyone says innovation. It's so much harder now. It's not. It's the same thing. Ravi, I'd really agree with you about culture. For me, the main thing, look, I'm an old boy. Old boys tend, unfortunately, to hold the purse strings to companies. Mm. So it's about connecting the money to the young people, Farrows, hey. who can actually make it happen. <laughs> Because if you connect those two things, then you're going to go much faster. And so for us at Virtue Zone, it's all about trust. It's being prepared to jump, taking a risk, and knowing sometimes when you make that jump, you're not going to succeed. Mm. But if you don't succeed, try and try again and know that your teammates will support you. So that's why culture. 15 years ago was really important. We took a risk, Tom, we really did. You know, we were in this brand new <laughs> sector, but it's just been fabulous. And, and you're absolutely right, Dubai does provide the infrastructure. It does recognize that the green shoots are there with the small companies, mm. but then you need to scale it as yeah. well. So I think we're at that stage now, it's the scaling side and innovation and certainly technology allows that scaling. Well speaking of technology Neil I know that the thing we all talk about young people included uh, is AI. AI is behind everything every episode we're talking about AI. Tell us about some of the tools that you're creating and utilizing. Well so firstly I'm really proud to say mm. that we've had three world firsts already. Okay. None of which have anything to do with me at all. <laughs> They're my team. You can take credit for it though. I'm certainly going to take credit for it. Tax GPT. So we pledged 50 million dirhams towards getting the first 10,000 companies in the UAE tax ready. How did we do that? Imagine trying to suddenly un onboard 10,000 people. That's a huge number of processes. It's laborious. There's so many opportunities for human error. We've built a system. Right, you actually can walk into our office and say, see seven computer screens whirring at each other. We've got 250 accountants in Cairo. We've got 48 here. Mm. And this computer system where Salesforce is talking to the Federal Tax Authority, and it's automated so we can do it way faster. And if we didn't have AI, if we didn't have tax GPT, we couldn't do that. So that's one. We've got chat VZ. I hate saying Z, it should be Z. Z. <laughs> but anyway, chat, Quite right. chat VZ seems to flow. So that is enabling people with actually two things. One, we help people build a business plan. Listen, it's not just about setting up a company. Don't listen to the guy at Virtue Zone. Once you've got your company, you need a bank account, you need a phone. You need an ambassador like Tom. You need to win awards. Please, Ravi, thank you for that one last year, by the way. So you need all, all these uh, things. So one of the things is when you go and try and open your bank account and when you try and get access to money, how do you get that? Well, if you come with a business plan, you're much more likely to be approved. So what the UAE is doing this year to help innovation, I think, is providing more data to those companies so that you don't have to keep on filling out your passport. But it's there, the data's there, they know that you're a low risk opportunity and they can invest in you and make it happen. Amazing. We had the AI and another thing that another topic that we've been talking about is the metaverse as well. And you were one of the first companies as well to tap into the metaverse. So yeah. could you please tell us more we're about that? We're in the metaverse. Yeah. <laughs> we have a VZ building in the metaverse. <laughs> And actually, I'm going to say from metaverse to NFT because, yeah. listen, I think 
There's never been a bigger opportunity. I've lived in Dubai 30 years. Never been a bigger opportunity than there. One thing that Dubai is trying to do, DFF is trying to facilitate, <coughs> is enable, if you come to Dubai, it's the, going to be the easiest place in the world to raise money. Traditionally, we'd raise money by IPOing. I was talking to your producer earlier. She's had a company with us for 13 years. She wanted to do an IPO. It's very laborious, it's very costly, so it's a barrier to entry. So great, small, young companies can't do it. Now, if you can tokenize, so you can, for example, Ravi, tokenize 10% of your business, you can raise cash. And if you can do that really fast, you can use the blockchain, so all the government authorities know you're doing it very safely. And it's regulated by VARA, the most regulated system and jurisdiction in the world, then you can raise money faster. And that's going to attract people from Silicon Valley, from London, from Moscow, from wherever it might happen to be. And if we get that right, and we're hoping in partnership with Toko to be the first in the world to do that, then startups are going to be like, hey, it's not just about being tax efficient, it's also about being able to get access to funds, and that helps us recruit. And let's talk about not the brain, it's a brain gain at the moment, because there are brilliant people coming from various parts of the world where there is trouble and strife at the moment, and I don't mean your wife. Not at all. So they're coming here, they want to work here, brilliant lifestyle, let's use those brains to innovate. Definitely. Neil, where do you see the innovation ecosystem growing? Since you have so many of these companies setting up, is there an ecosystem of innovation that's you know, really, really becoming robust? And what kind of value exchange do you see happening between these companies? Yeah, I think you, you, you mentioned the word robust. That's really, really important. Dubai is maturing. Everything is evolving. We need to get to the next stage. We need to be able to scale our companies. I think one of the challenges in the past is all of this was available, but it's not what you know, it's who you know. And there's only a few of us that know all the right people. So as I was saying at the beginning, particularly you're more likely to see innovation from a young person. You only have to see my daughter run technology compared to this old fuddy-duddy <laughs> trying to look for the video cassette recorder. That's it. Remember yeah. that? Yeah, now I've still okay. got mine. Yeah. yeah. To see that we, we absolutely depend on the youth. So the average age here, the level of education here, that's all set up to work. But we need to get those young people able to access the network. So having that having awards that recognize your company's awards, the awards at Virtue Zone that, that we had last week, to actually really look for companies that succeed because the stock market is a brilliant display barometer of who, when Apple shares go up, it's mm. because they're selling more iPhones. The same thing for startups. We want to be able to not just you think that a company is succeeding, but see it visibly feel confident you can invest in it, and then they can invest in their staff, in their technology, and help it grow. And if they're doing it here, in a, the most tax-efficient manner in the world, everyone's a winner. I don't have a single entrepreneurial bone in my body, but you've inspired me to start a business. We'll chat. Thank Perhaps you. Perhaps it's cartilage. <laughs> Perhaps you're a shark and you're Maybe. a survivor. Well, Neil, thank you so much for being on DXB today. Now, I went to the Dubai Future Forum at the world's largest gathering of futurists over at the Museum of the Future to meet some of these experts and innovators across sectors discussing their contributions to make sure that Dubai's position as a rising global hub stays very safe. This is what they had to say. Yes, it's Ferris, and today I am taking a step into the future. Well, the closest possible thing, which is the Museum of the Future, specifically at the Dubai Future Foundation, with so many innovators, futurists, talking about what we can expect in the future of the UAE and the world. Let's get into it. I wanted to ask you about the futurists, of course, because there's so many amazing speakers who come here. What's the process for deciding who has this platform to talk about their industry? So, I mean, first of all, um, we look at the topics. What, matter more, what matters most to humanity? And um, uh, everyone knows the, the, the usual suspects of topics, whether it being climate or whether it being 
uh, adaptation in space, whether being AI and now Gen AI and how it can regulate it. Um, uh, like I said, climate as well, and 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 um, uh, the the um, the value of the whole digital economy beyond uh, AI, uh, metaverse, and the virtual world, and how we can how we can extract value out of it. So those topics are all uh, headlines at the Dubai Future Forum. Uh, but the idea is, how do you get the experts and get the conversations done? But more importantly, now that we've built the network, uh, our next mission is really how to convert those dialogues that are driven by those conversations and also driven by our internal foresight research and the reports that we disseminate. We get them all together and then we work on uh, jointly with everyone on how we can really laser focus on the important topics and come up with an action plan because we don't want this uh, convening to be talks driven with no action. We want to make sure that uh, come year three, we are actually presenting tangible outcomes that are uh, in the betterment of humanity. So stem cells, I know that in the past there was a lot of controversy surrounding stem cells as to where they were sourced from. Uh, is it true that that is no longer a concern for people? Well, nowadays, indeed, we can take an adult cell, it could be from you or from a patient, and then turn this into a stem cell, and then make any cell type we want. So that could be a liver cell, a brain cell. You know, it really sounds very futuristic, uh, but in the laboratory, that's already possible. It's already being done. Now, bringing this to people, that's still a big step. You know, it's a transformation that will probably take years and decades to cure diseases like diabetes or, you know, Parkinson's. So definitely you can use it to grow organs. You can use it to create transgenetic species. So besides currently right now, you could edit out dangerous uh, genetic traits. So if your baby has a propensity, let's say to have diabetes, maybe in the future we could eliminate it when the baby is developing. But in the future, that means I can also give the baby traits. I can say, I want my baby to see infrared rays. I want to give them special vision. How can I borrow it from the animal kingdom? And this is where I think there isn't enough hindsight. So while we say we should not do things that are hereditary for humans, I'm not really sure whether we have enough international understanding and agreements on it. So we had a little chat about what Trueflation does. Uh, can you explain it one more time in your terms? Yeah. And then I'll try and make sense of it. So what we do is we aggregate over hundreds of million price feeds every single day and provide that as an oracle to the blockchain. So Web2, Web3, or even normal traditional businesses can subscribe to the data and know they're getting an accurate price for anything that is touching the real world. And I recall the quote from His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed, the president of the UAE. He said, let's secure a good future for our grandchildren. To secure a good future for our grandchildren, this is a collective effort. Uh, it requires that we, we actively work together to shape a better future, a good future for all. And that takes a lot of collaboration, a lot of effort. And I think maybe uh, the, the the Dubai Future Forum uh, 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 was was really made is to bring those futures together. We have today uh, around 300 futures coming from all over the world to, to discuss the grand challenges that facing us as a humanity, one of which, of course, is the climate change, but also to, and to try to anticipate the, the change and to try to, uh, to, try to draw uh, better scenarios for the future of humanity. Well, it's been very insightful, very educational, and I'm very confident that the UAE is going to remain a hub for the future of the world right here in the GCC region. Yeah, great insight into uh, the future, not of Dubai, but the region as a whole. Right, time now for today's roundup. What have you got for us, Ahmed? That is true. I have got the daily roundup. Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum's Solar Park and Innovation Center showcases the UAE's pioneering role in clean energy ahead of COP28. It emerges as an example of the nation's commitment to renewable energy and is inspired by the vision of Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum for the Emirate to be the city with the lowest carbon footprint in the world by 2050. I've been there a couple of days ago and I went to the tower that takes solar energy stores it and then distributes it to the solar panels down there. So what do you guys think about that? 
Yeah, those solar towers are so cool. And I remember seeing something at Expo 2020, so it's been around for a while, but it's a sort of, it collects sunlight, but also converts the humidity of the UAE into drinkable water, mm. and it grows plants on the outside, and it grows fungus on the inside. So I think that's, I think that's all we need. And it looks really cool. It does look cool. Yeah. yeah, it's very bright from, like I was, I was driving and I was like, what is that over there? And then they said that it stores the energy and it like looks Like a gamma ray, honestly. isn't it? You know, it's like a sort of spacey gamma ray yeah, thing. That's yeah. It's cool. Uh, the weird thing about this one is that it's been around for quite a while. Yeah. You know, we're talking about the future here today. We're talking about innovation. This was innovation and the scale of this thing and the infrastructure of this thing. You know, this sort of had to take a huge commitment many, many, many years ago. And now we're sort of uh, bearing the fruits of it. But again, that gives you that little insight, as you were saying, Ravi, a bit earlier on about this, the vision that's run through the leadership here for many generations. True. Uh, you know, and, and I think uh, there are innovations which have, there are three kinds of innovations, right? One is incremental where you're improving things over the time. And the other is disruptive. And the third is radical. What we are talking about climate tech, health tech, is literally radical innovation, which mm. has the potential to change things as they are. And renewable energy, green energy, green, green tech, climate tech have that potential. And, and the nation has really invested a lot in terms of policies, in terms of infrastructure, and the leadership's vision mm. to really make UAE a carbon neutral, and actually carbon positive you know, nation in the future. Well, that's the thing, the UAE and like countries in this part of the world have always been energy suppliers. Mm. And there's something that we've got a lot of in the UAE is sun. Yes. So I would even love to see more solar towers built, more solar panels that can even be sent to sort of countries that don't have as much sun as yeah. well. Someone tried to explain this to me the other day and said, we've got, our sun's too bright. Uh, we haven't got, I was like, it's the sun. Surely it's the same sun. Right to harness? Apparently, too, you know, our, our sun is very glary, uh, okay. apparently, uh, as opposed to other parts of sun or suns that, well, not other suns, other parts the sun in other parts of the world yeah. where it's not as glary. So I think we hit surfaces and come off a bit quicker. So you have to have the technology to harness that. It sounds like they definitely explained it well, Tom. I still <laughs> scratch my head. That's so why I leave it. I leave it to the clever people. That's for All sure. All right, we'll definitely have to do an episode on that. But what's coming up on today's episode? Let's find out. Coming up, we will be meeting the Director of Corporate Innovation at the Shaloub Group to discuss emerging technologies here in the Middle East. Plus, we've got a very talented artist with us in the studio. Stay tuned. 